Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your depression recovery channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is What I Learned from My Hip Replacement Surgery About Coping with Pain. Of course, we have to start with a joke, and we just had Halloween a couple days ago, so I thought this would be in keeping with that uh, holiday. Why did the witch not wear a flat hat? Well, there was no point in it. <laughs> I love plays on words. All right, well, as I said, the title of the video is called What I... <laughs> whatever it is, what my hip surgery, hip replacement surgery taught me about uh, coping with pain. And as many of you know who've been following these videos for the past four or five videos, I've been talking about the fact that I had a monumental life change when I had a hip replacement surgery in August of this year at the age of 72. A number of my friends had had the surgery, so I thought I had a pretty good idea what to expect. When I talked to the surgeons who I interviewed, they said, oh yeah, no problem. These days, uh, the surgery is actually a day surgery and there are little or no complications. My chiropractor added, uh, in this day and age, hip surgery, hip replacement surgery is a slam dunk. The first night after I got home from the hospital, I felt really, really good, uh, almost euphoric. Wow, I thought, this is going to be a piece of cake, just like the chiropractor said. What I didn't realize <laughs> was that I was still under the influence of the anesthesia. When it did wear off the next day, I felt the intense pain that would be expected given the traumatic nature of the surgery. However, I took heart when I was told that this pain would gradually disappear over the next three months. Having a clear endpoint to the pain gave me peace of mind. However, 11 days after the surgery, in a freak accident, I fell directly on my left hip, the hip that I had been operated on. In so doing, I severely strained the psoas muscle, which is a hip flexor muscle instrumental in lifting the leg. Now, every time I did so or tried to walk, I was in intense pain. Oh my God, I thought, this can't be true. I'm back to square one. All the progress I made has been nullified. And since uh, hip flexor strains are very hard to treat, as I've known since I had one eight years ago, uh, suddenly that clear endpoint of the pain was gone. I thought to myself, I actually went back into the depressive mindset and thinking, what if I never recover from the strain? What if I am never able to walk again without pain? In the midst of feeling sorry for myself, suddenly I had a revelation. It wasn't just people with depression who uh, suffer from pessimism and hopelessness. Anyone who has a chronic physical illness, such as MS, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, etc., that doesn't have an endpoint in healing or doesn't have a timeline for healing has the potential to feel this kind of despair. Since my physical complaint was that of ongoing pain, I decided to talk to my brother who's suffered from chronic pain for the last seven years to ask him how he copes with it. Well, he said, I went to a special seminar at a pain clinic and what they told me or taught me was uh, coping strategies very similar to the ones you teach in your book and on this channel. And I used them to basically just barely reduce the pain enough so that it becomes bearable. In addition, he said, I find ways to be of service that give meaning to my life, such as uh, driving the elderly to their medical appointments and volunteering at the Humane Society. After our conversation, I decided that even if my physical pain never completely went away, I could follow my brother's example and find ways of managing the pain and creating meaning in order to have a decent quality of life. I thought to myself, you know, if my brother is able to live with his chronic pain, then so can I. Uh, his example, I won't say inspired me, but gave me confidence that no matter what happened, I could persevere. So what I learned from my hip replacement surgery is that whether it's physical pain or mental emotional pain, the key uh, to having a decent quality of life is to learn to manage that pain one day at a time and find ways to bring meaning and value to your life. Now, if any of you would like to know what some of these strategies are for the past, I don't know, 1996, 25 years, I've been using a set of 45 specific coping strategies to keep myself well, at least most of the time. And if you'd like to get a free diagram, a color diagram 
of these strategies? Well, just uh, email me. You'll see my email address just very shortly in the ending credits of the video. This has been Douglas George Block. I love my middle name. I was named after George Washington because I was born on his birthday. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something from it. If you do, please write your comments in the comments section. I always enjoy reading them and I answer every one. Or you can email me, uh, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, uh, simply when the uh, credits come on, click on the uh, little subscribe button. And if you click on the uh, bell to the right, you'll be uh, notified every time I make a new video or a new live chat. And if you'd like to contribute to this channel, simply click on the Patreon link at the very end and you'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until we, wish, until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thanks for watching.